It is Friday, August 14th. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Well, we no longer have to wonder whether Donald Trump will try and sabotage the election by making it really hard to vote by mail. He just came out and said it. Meanwhile, the stress of the coronavirus pandemic is really getting to people. A new survey shows Americans are more anxious, depressed, and traumatized than ever. And lastly, hundreds of people swarmed an immigration and customs enforcement vehicle to prevent two men from getting taken away from their families. We'll take a look at this flash mob for justice that came together. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. And these are the stories you need to know. Donald Trump now admits he wants to deny $25 billion in emergency funding to the U.S. Postal Service in order to prevent mail-in voting from functioning smoothly during the coronavirus pandemic. He's basically bragging about trying to rig the election while complaining that the election will be rigged. Go figure. Yesterday, in an interview with Fox News, Trump laid out his thinking in denying funding for the postal office. He said, quote, they need that money in order to make the postal office work so it can take all of these millions and millions of ballots. Now, if we don't make a deal, that means they don't get the money. That means they can't have universal mail-in voting. They just can't have it. Sort of a crazy thing. End quote. Yeah, sort of a crazy thing. You might say that. A spokesman for Joe Biden said Trump is, quote, sabotaging a basic service that hundreds of millions of people rely upon and cutting a critical lifeline for rural economies and for delivery of medicines because he wants to deprive Americans of their fundamental right to vote safely, end quote. Separately, Vice News reported that the Postal Service management is removing mail sorting machines from facilities around the country without any explanation. These machines are the same ones that will be used to sort ballots for the November presidential election. Postal worker who spoke to Vice compared it to a grocery store, removing one third of the checkout machines and expecting the same level of customer service. While the consequences of removing the machines has yet to been felt, Vice reports that the decision fits with a pattern of sudden, opaque and drastic changes made by the new Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, in his first two months on the job. DeJoy, incidentally, is a longtime Republican fundraiser and Trump donor. Go figure again. His real job seems to be bureaucratic sabotage. Americans are losing it. This, according to a new study by the Centers for Disease Control and the pandemic, is to blame. The study surveyed more than 5,400 Americans, according to Yahoo News. Nearly 41% of people reported at least one mental or behavioral health problem. Approximately one in three suffered from anxiety or depression. One in four showed symptoms of a traumatic disorder. One in five said they were using drugs or alcohol more heavily or for the first time in order to cope. You can put me in that category and not for the first time. One in 10 said they had seriously considered suicide. That's really bad. Please call someone if you're feeling that way. I'm pretty sure the pandemic is to blame because it's not the first time the CDC has carried out this mental health survey. Compared to the same period last year, frequency of anxiety symptoms tripled, depression quadrupled, and serious suicidal ideation doubled. More than 90% said they were not being treated for anxiety, depression, or post-traumatic stress before the pandemic struck. Compared to other demographics, younger adults, non-whites, essential workers, and unpaid adult caregivers are faring, quote, disproportionately worse, end quote, as if the coronavirus itself wasn't bad enough. Can we get some Medicare for all, please? And at the very least, please be comforted in some measure by the fact that you are not alone and having a tough time right now. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. Early on Wednesday morning, immigration and customs enforcement agents arrested two men in Bend, Oregon, then loaded the men onto buses. 
One of the men, named Marcos, was allowed to call his wife at around one in the afternoon. That call set off a chain reaction on social media, and soon people began driving from all over central Oregon to surround the ICE buses. Hundreds of people swarmed the area and spotted the buses in a parking lot behind a hotel. Some people, including a member of the city council, parked their cars in front of the buses to prevent them from leaving. Others simply stood in front of the ICE vehicles. According to Oregon Public Broadcasting, family members of the detained men wept against the sides of the bus, pleading with the ICE contractors operating the bus to allow them to give the men food and water. A small boy cried, Papa, Papa, I love you. This went on for 10 hours. Local police came, first in SWAT attire, then in regular uniforms. Then the local police chief made a personal appearance and warned the crowd that more federal agents were on their way. Around 11 o'clock at night, more Border Patrol officers showed up and pepper sprayed some of the people in the crowd. The agents succeeded in removing their colleagues as well as the detained men, but civil liberties groups used the time they gained thanks to the impromptu action to file an emergency motion in federal court on behalf of the men. The motion seeks to prevent the men from being removed from Central Oregon and taken away from their families. The local district attorney, John Hummel, later wrote, quote, I've never been so disgusted by my government and so proud of my community, end quote. And now for some quicker cookies. Quicker quickie. Israel and the United Arab Emirates have struck a deal to normalize their diplomatic relations. As part of the deal, Israel reportedly will forego its attempts to annex more land in the West Bank. In a White House statement, Trump took credit for brokering the agreement, of course, but his actual involvement remains unclear. From Gaza, Hamas denounced the deal and called it, quote, tantamount to a free reward for the Israeli occupation. We should say that there were already more or less normalized diplomatic relations between these two countries. They were just all back in the background. Secondly, annexing the West Bank is highly internationally illegal. Trump administration is getting rid of environmental rule limiting how much methane oil and gas companies can allow to leak into the atmosphere from wells, pipelines, and storage tanks. This, of course, is a terrible idea because methane warms the atmosphere even faster than carbon dioxide. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Andrew Wheeler announced the new rule in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, making no attempt to hide the fact that it's an election year political gambit. Sad. Sad for all of us. City Council in Austin, Texas, approved a new budget yesterday that cuts $150 million from the city's police force. Some $20 million in cuts will take effect immediately. According to the Austin American Statesman, much of the police funding will be redirected to a wide variety of programs and departments, including emergency medical services, mental health response, a family violence shelter, parks and trails, abortion access, and substance abuse care. The new budget was approved unanimously after months of public outcry over police brutality. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem plans to build a wall around her official residence. The project, budgeted at $400,000, consists of eight-foot-tall fencing made of powder-coated steel. The governor's office cannot cite any specific threats to justify the expense, this according to CBS News. An earlier design for the wall included a guardhouse, but that feature has apparently been dropped. Sort of sad. One might expect machine gun turrets. I mean, why is Governor Nome caving to the libs and not putting on machine gun turrets? Jeez. Quicker. Quickie. That's all for the AM Quickie. Join us this afternoon live on the Majority Report at noon. Alex Perrine will be my guest. And then followed up by the always wonderful Judy Gold. 